Hello everyone and welcome back to International Space Station Assembly in Kerbal Space Program 1.3.1. In this video we have two shuttle launches. The first one is STS-113 with the shuttle Endeavour bringing up the P-1 truss to the station. We had previously placed the S-1 truss so this is the truss on the opposite side. It contains the radiators, the main radiators. Uh, there are also supposed to be radiators on the solar trusses, the P3-4s and the S3-4. But anyway, this first. I thought about speeding up the launch uh, to make it real time. Of course, it's about half time now, a little bit less than half time actually. Uh, basically meaning that it takes two seconds real uh, time to equal one second game time. But of course, there's music and that distorted the music in a weird way. So I decided not to do that. Maybe in the future, I'll try and record the launches without music to avoid that. But anyway, I thought about doing that because obviously all of this stuff would be a lot more smoother if I just sped up the video. Anyway, but we have it as it is here and it's very nice anyway. So here the shuttle is going to roll over. Now, once again, the trick here is getting it back safely, really. But also, I wanted to dock it and this time we did bring up a docking port. And we will see how that goes. There are complications, uh, but I'll have to show you rather than tell you. Anyway, inclination-wise, we're going well. It's doing its job adjusting inclination. I think I basically figured out what the launch window, the launch timing ought to be at this point. You can see the relative inclination there is very sweet. I don't think that's going to be any problem at all. So again, uh, working towards making sure we don't have fuel problems, but as it turns out, uh, spoilers, uh, we will have fuel problems on this one at least. The next one, STS-115, uh, will be a lot better. Anyway, there's the truss in the bay uh, with the docking port up front finally, and also our trusty little tugs. And again, I'm just gonna rely on tugs. As as far as using Canada Arm in the future is concerned, I might do it for actual station operations like capturing a dragon capsule or something like that. I don't want to do it uh, for constructing the station, mainly because at this stage of constructing the International Space Station, it takes a lot of handing off between the shuttles, uh, Canada Arm and Canada Arm 2, which is on the station, and then Canada Arm 2 has to sort of walk itself on the station. It's very complicated, and I'm not NASA, so... I don't want to go through all that rigmarole, to be honest. I'm lazy, basically. Uh, and I'm doing this during a live stream, just remember, so it's like really tedious for everybody to watch. I don't know, I, I guess some people like to watch it, but um, I'm not entirely sure everybody wants to watch me use Canada Arm for 3-4 hours. Anyway, so here I am manually uh, turning it to sort of get it somewhat oriented to the docking port before trying to use smart ASS to do the negative parallel thing. Control from the A-pass docking port there. Target, negative parallel. And this is where everything goes wrong. So, initially, we don't see anything too odd, but it is using a whole lot of our control, our RCS control, if you look in the bottom left there. And it starts to roll. You see, it's rolling away, even though I haven't turned on force roll. Controlling from the cockpit, that would be a yaw orientation, but I think from the docking port that counts as a roll. Anyway, uh, it gets worse, as you can see. Now it's just completely out of alignment. And so I have no idea what Smart ASS was doing. But also importantly, when I turn on SAS, it's unable to stabilize it when I'm controlling from the docking port. So that is a problem. I have to back off. I shift control to the cockpit again. Then SAS can stabilize it, but it can't stabilize it when I'm controlling from the docking port. It just gets confused. I don't know why it should have a problem at this point, because after all, the A-pass uh, docking port is just a configuration on the stock docking port. And I think maybe what happened was because the docking port is just stuck on top of that orbiter docking assembly, um, maybe I put it on the wrong node after doing this a few times. You'll see me uh, struggle with this a few times, unfortunately, on uh, this mission and then the two next ones. But maybe that's what's gone on. I don't, I don't know how I managed to stick it on the wrong node because it was node to node. It should be the bottom node that uh, attaches to that docking port. I shifted to uh, control from the docking port at the last moment here and SAS had the same problem, you see. 
it's uh, yawing away from the thing. So, and in fact, it didn't even, it fought against me when I tried to back away. So, that was a problem too. So, yeah. Just looking at the video, I think maybe I need to check whether the top docking node on the orbiter docking port is upside down and therefore caught the docking side of the APAS docking port. I don't know. That's, that's weird. It's very weird. Anyway, all the docking attempts cost me so much fuel that I had to just cancel that whole notion and just save the fuel for return. And so we're on to the tugs. I just parked the shuttle a little distance away and got the tugs out. And admittedly, the tugs are sort of cheaty. I mean, they are not exactly how this was all done. Clawing a payload like this would not be nominal. <laughs> um, uh, it would not be a good idea. Of course, they would have little attachment fittings, and the only reason I'm using this instead of the grappler is because of uh, problems I've had with the grappler, though uh, uh, somebody had mentioned a way to get around that using a certain part, but I'm just going to stick with this for now. Um, but also, the way those RCS ports were actually blowing at the payload to pull it away from the shuttle, that... Anyway, I acknowledge those things, but it's not ideal, but I want a station for other purposes later. So we are doing this construction here. And I've steadfastly opposed cheating anything to orbit for any operations. I've occasionally done so when testing my mods, but other than that, I haven't done so. So if we wanted an international space station, we had to build one. So here we are. Anyway, here we are placing that truss um, and getting it right here. There we go. Very good. Uh, it took a little bit of tilting because the original S0 truss is a little bit off. It's like 8 degrees off. So these had to be placed 8 degrees offset. So the tugs return and everything is good, right? Well, there was that fuel situation. There is that. These little guys are so cute though. There is something oddly satisfying about using these little tugs to put things together. They're like little pets in a way. And you know, they give a lot of good views of the shuttle on the way back. And on the way out. Could have done tile inspections if you put a camera on them. And here we go. You can see that docking port assembly, which has its own docking node, which complicates things too. So, there might be something about it getting in the way of the A-Pass docking port. I don't know. Maybe it'd be better if I just put together my own docking assembly or disabled the docking node on that one and just used an attachment node at the top of it. Something like that is probably going on. But I don't know what. Anyway, you can see how tight our fuel situation is right now. And that's partly because of how much fuel the KOS script uses to do turns which is about 30 meters per second, which is obscene. But it also has this roll wobble. You can see right now it's maxing out roll. I put it on fine controls to limit how serious that is. So right now it just uh, looks like it's doing S turns and then by the time it gets around 100 kilometers, it stops that and I can uh, take it off of fine controls eventually when it needs it. And now it's doing a nice control turn towards Cape Canaveral here, but we're running out of fuel. Uh, we have run out of fuel, and eventually it basically doesn't have any yaw control. You see, with the shuttle tilted up like that, its vertical stabilizer is basically shielded from the airfoil. Not that there's much air yet. So eventually it yaws out of control because the only thing that was keeping the yaw was the RCS. It, it's a very slow, it didn't uh, immediately happen. It took a little bit of time, but eventually once it got off kilter, it's off. So I aborted the KOS script and tried to take control, but that was no easy thing. We really don't have enough air to use the control surfaces until maybe about 45 kilometers. Um, and then only convincingly use them to recover fr from this when we we're much lower. So here, about 17 kilometers, I can force it to point at prograde, try to enforce it. That's what I'm doing right here, leveling it out, pushing it to prograde, and then we can stop it from essentially stalling. It's stalled 
um, once it lost, lost grip on the air. Usually at 45 kilometers, the KOS script pitches down. You'll see this on the next shuttle launch in the shuttle mission. Uh, it pitches down at that point to point at prograde because otherwise it would stall. Even though it's going very fast, there's just not much air. So, yeah. Anyway. So here we go, landing somewhere in the middle of Florida. Right around there-ish. We'll, we will glide away. So a word about the glide slope. Um, the shuttle, I have already mentioned, is a little bit better than it ought to be. But keep in mind that even at its worst, the shuttle's glide, uh, glide ratio is uh, 5 to 1 or something like that. Which means that if you're at 6 kilometers up, you can expect to go 30 kilometers horizontally. Um, and it can be better than that depending on the situation. That's at constant velocity. So if you're willing to dump velocity, well, you can glide further. Anyway, we got to recover that, but not where we wanted it. And next up is SDS-115 with the shuttle Atlantis. And this is carrying the P3-4 truss. And there was an STS-114. Uh, that carried an external stowage platform, but I didn't do that because I didn't have an external stowage platform to add. And that was a trivial part that we can add later if necessary. So this is the, the P3 slash 4 truss carries the solar arrays. So we do need that. And uh, there is, there was in the original Space Station Freedom Plan, there was a P2 truss, but that actually uh, carried the control thrusters for the station. But since we uh, teamed up with the Russians on International Space Station, we didn't need the P2 truss to have control thrusters because the control thrusters were on the Russian side of the station uh, with the Zarya and Zvezda modules. So having those, they just decided to skip the P2 and S2 trusses, which would have helped handle the controls with the thrusters. Anyway, so that's the story on the missing two. The realism overall configurations for the P3 and P4 truss were a little bit wrong, and this might have already been corrected uh, since I'm using the 1.3.1 version. But the they had the P3 truss weighing 15 tons and the P4 truss weighing 15 tons, but they were brought together. They were 15 tons combined. Uh, they weren't uh, separated. So, and of course, the shuttle wouldn't be able to carry 30 tons to the International Space Station. So, a little bit of a mass error there that I had to correct, but that might have been corrected in a more recent version of Realism Overhaul anyway, assuming anybody is still using these community ISS parts. I think I was using community ISS parts for these panels. One little problem though, I decided to put, so I have solar arrays on this, but they're different than the solar arrays that I put on the P6 truss already there. I accidentally used a different solar panel model. And as a result, I mean, in theory, they should be the same size. They both said, you know, ISS solar panels, but they might look a little bit different. And so basically our inner panels will look one way and our outer panels are going to look different. And well, we'll just have to deal with that. So here I'm coming into dock and around this time I do something really silly. I tried to control from there. Instead, I click decouple node. Now, that shouldn't do anything, right? And this is one reason why I think it was on the wrong node. Because on the A-Pass, it has nothing on its node. I right-clicked on the A-Pass, click decouple node. It shouldn't decouple. But instead, that docking port separated from the shuttle. Which means it was on its docking node. Which is weird. But anyway, I did a simulated docking in this case. And that's what we're uh, going for here, uh, fuel. But I'm controlling from the cockpit. I'm not controlling from the docking assembly because the docking assembly isn't oriented in the right direction at all. When I clicked, right clicked on the docking assembly in the bay right now, it's still controlled from the same direction as the shuttle cockpit. So yeah, that's weird. There's all sorts of weird stuff about this docking assembly. Anyway, so I got close Considering I couldn't control from the right direction, I am sort of happy with how I did it anyway. I'm using Smart ASS's uh, kill rotation in place of SAS because SAS was wiggling around too much. And this was a little bit more sparing on fuel. 
Now you can see they, these docking ports won't magnetize the docking assembly there. That's why I had to put that other A pass one on top of it. Because well, we're a little bit off there. Off the side. And yeah, obviously these are not connecting right now. But anyway, in principle, uh, we can proceed with the docking next time, hopefully. We will see about that. But for now, I need to take care of the cargo. And so here go our trusty tugs again. Uh, so the P3 truss is the um, girder part, and then the P4 is the one carrying the solar panels there. I had to add a docking port to the P4 truss. It doesn't normally have that bit, but otherwise we really can't connect the parts together. In real life, they just bolted things together. So they didn't dock them. Astronauts went out and sort of screwed in or whatever. So here we go with the second tug. Always use two tugs, it's better that way. I play music during the stream using VLC Media Player and occasionally has an interesting choice. You know, it's just on random shuffle. This one is an OC Remix piece, uh, but I also have some game music. This is Civ Beyond Earth now. But here we go, moving the truss. Little tugs have to do a lot of hard work, but they have enough fuel for it. It's not easy for them to maneuver these things into place. Best to uh, be patient about it. Now here, initially, when I brought it in, I made a, I made a mistake. I really, this was my time for silly mistakes, apparently, uh, because uh, it's oriented wrong. You can sort of see by the panels, uh, this is 90 degrees off from where it needs to be, so I had to undock. But when I did that, one of the tugs went a little bit awry. And I don't know if you noticed it there, but maybe you can see it here. Uh, the tug closer to the camera here is off. Um, it's somehow the tank and the clamp are not together anymore. I mean, they're, they're stuck together, but... Uh, they're not aligned anymore, and there's a gap between them. I don't know how that happened, but basically, it was a busted tug. And so, after getting the solar truss proper, I decided that we would just dispose of that tug. But if we dispose of one of them, we have to dispose of both of them, because otherwise, the shuttle bay will be imbalanced. And, I mean, I don't think these are a huge mass. And possibly we could have just brought one back down, but I just decided to deorbit both. So yeah, this one is going off with its uh, glitch, basically. And I decided to use the other one to grab the wayward docking port to dispose of that. So here we go, grabbing that. Trying to grab it. I think... There we go. Alright. And so that will be deorbited by the tug. So alas, uh, our pets meet their demise for the first time. It's sad. Moment of silence. Anyway, but the shuttle gets back into its standby orbit. We have plenty of fuel to deorbit this time. So I'm roughly confident. I was uh, thinking that we would get it back home safe this on this occasion. Maybe land on a runway properly, finally. So here we go. The KOS script is still doing its wiggling, and I've still got on fine controls there, you see. Technically, you're not supposed to do that. I'm, I'm working on uh, refining the PID controller for re-entry. Uh, the KOS PID controller, the built-in one, adjusting the steering manager stuff, but... Uh, it's had some beneficial effect in terms of cutting down on the fuel that it uses, but it still needs me to turn on fine controls basically between 140 kilometers and a, about 80 kilometers down, maybe to 70 sometimes. But anyway, we have plenty of fuel. It's well controlled approaching Tampa here, and it begins to pitch down maneuver at 45 kilometers as planned. Now, I don't know when it does this in real life, but this is when it needs to do it in Kerbal Space Program. Uh, after extensive testing, I decided that this is when it would be safest to do it, and important to do it here, 
uh, to mitigate the possibility of it stalling out. So it's pointing at prograde, it just stays pointing at prograde. The descent attitude for the shell is, oh, what's going on? The, note that the roll and yaw were not maxed out there. So it wasn't out of control. K West did something horribly wrong there. And, well, I've now taken control, trying to save the situation, but we lost both our OMS pods. So just on the brink of victory, for some reason it decided to go all wacky on me. I didn't quite understand why. Now, we are descending very quickly here, so, but I'm trying to recover the craft. But basically our glidability here is in excess of 30 kilometers because we can lose some speed. Right, the glide ratio is 5 to 1. We actually, it's better than 5 to 1 right now because we lost the OMS pods, we're lighter. Uh, so, you can see uh, that's actually launch clamps over there, 20 kilometers, but we're very low right now. So, it's gliding better than it ought to, as I said. And of course, we are lighter now with the OMS pods, but it's better than it ought to even with the OMS pods. But not a whole lot, it's not airliner level. It's still descending quickly and losing speed at the same time. Uh, and the only reason I can get anywhere near to the runway, we don't have the shuttle landing facility, we're just using the regular KSC runway. The only reason we can get anywhere near is because I can afford to lose speed, which again helps you to glide a little bit further. The glide ratio is for a constant speed. One thing that might throw people off in assessing how well the shuttle is actually gliding here is the fact that we're not in real time. Especially when we're passing through clouds, uh, through maybe uh, 3 to 8 kilometers. We're definitely not in real time, it's like 2 seconds to 1 second, so it seems like it's gliding a lot better than it really is. Well, I managed to get down, and the wheels might not be the most realistic things on the planet. Because uh, I was able to roll and keep rolling, I haven't pressed the brakes or anything, just keep rolling towards the runway. <laughs> uh... Yeah, and we got it on there. Yeah, we made it. We made it this time. Jeez. Still, uh, could do with a little bit of work. I wish I had the shuttle landing facility so I didn't have to worry about those bumps in the runway. But at these speeds, it doesn't really matter. So, just rolling right along and, well, we'll try and do better next time. What else can I say? But the ISS continues to be built, and we keep bringing our crews back at least. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.